Hello. Today I'm going to be making grape mead or melomel or piment, whatever you want to call it. It's a combination of grapes and honey. I'm going to make a one gallon batch and this is the recipe I've worked up. A pound of grapes, three pounds of good quality honey, three quarters of a gallon of good chlorine free water, teaspoon of yeast nutrient, half a teaspoon of pectic enzyme powder, one crushed Campton tablet at the beginning and one crushed tamp Campton tablet at bottling time. The thing that started this project is the fact that I had a pound of wine grapes that I just didn't know what to do with. I didn't have enough to really make wine. These are a red wine grape variety regent from Germany. I grow them in my backyard. I would have had many more this year, but the wasps ate them all. I was waiting for the sugars to get up, and then uh, the wasp cleaned them out before I picked them. Here's the start of my procedure. I'm going to sanitize the equipment, and then add the honey and water to the fermenter, dissolve it, then crush the grapes, throw in the fermenter in a nylon mesh bag, then add my crushed Campton tablet, yeast nutrient pectic enzyme, stir it, cover it loosely for 24 hours, and then sometime tomorrow put the yeast in. So what I have is my pound of grapes, my three quarter gallon of water, about three pounds of honey, and of course Campton tablets, some pectic enzyme powder, yeast nutrient, there's a Campton tablet. I'm going to use this teaspoon to crush it thoroughly when the time comes. I'm not ready yet. I'm using a two gallon fermenting bucket. Here's a nylon mesh bag, airlock. I crushed a Campton tablet in about a quarter or so of water, and then I use that to rinse and sanitize my equipment after I've thoroughly cleaned it first. Then I just rinse with sulfite solution. And my handy hydrometer back here. I'm going to use that to check my starting gravity once I get everything mixed up. So first I'm going to get this water and honey dissolved thoroughly. Or at least as the best I can in the fermenter. Then I'm going to use my handy potato masher to crush the grapes. Put them in the bag and add to the fermenter. I guess I better get started on my honey first. The three quarters gallon of water is in the fermenting bucket. I've poured in one pound of honey and I've got about two more to get in here. It's important I get that all stirred up well. If it's not thoroughly dissolved, little pieces of the Campton tablet get stuck in the bottom. And just lay there and keep your yeast from growing. I'll get this stirred. The three pounds of honey is thoroughly dissolved in the three quarter gallon of water. Figuring the volume on this recipe was a bit tricky. Three pounds of honey is about one quart and the grapes should contribute some juice and I guessed about three quarter of a gallon. I need to end up with slightly more than one gallon after this is done with its primary fermentation. Well now I've got to crush my grapes and I'm going to put this uh, nylon mesh bag into the bucket to contain the grapes. Crushing the grapes with the old potato masher. Not too bad if you have a small amount of grapes, but uh, it's a lot of work if you have a bunch of them. It is effective though. The grapes are pretty well crushed. 
Good thing about these Regent grapes is their color. Really intense red. I would think a red grape would be the most uh, interesting, colorful, and flavorful for this type of recipe. Probably any any grapes could be used, but uh, good wine grapes would be best. I've got my bag just sitting in here, so I'm going to dump these into it. And I think I'm going to need both hands for that. Well, that went in quite nicely. It's already turned the meat a red color. This is going to be some pretty stuff. I'm going to tie the end of this up and then uh, add my other ingredients. Now it is time to add the other ingredients. First, the crushed Campton tablet. And I crushed it as well as I can. I used that small spoon to crush it. Get that in. Next, the yeast nutrient. Honey doesn't have a lot of nutrition for the yeast, and it may not ferment very well without some kind of additional nutrition like the yeast nutrient being added. Grapes have some nutrition, but I don't know if that's enough grapes to really feed them. It's a lot of honey for it to eat. So next, I have the pectic enzyme powder. I put optional on the recipe, but I really recommend using this. It breaks down the color and the flavor of the grapes. And your final product will be clear. It breaks down the pectins. It really uh, adds some more grape flavor. You could not use it if you don't have it, but if you do have it, I would use it. Well, now I need to stir this all up. Get my handy stirrer over here. I'm using a tablespoon today. It's not a very big batch, so it's not uh, too hard to get stirred up. Very interesting color. Um, I guess now all I need to do is just loosely cover it so uh, any of the sulfites can escape overnight. Takes about 24 hours that Campton tablet to wear down and I can put yeast in. So I'm just going to put the lid on just loosely. I'll probably lay a little paper towel over the hole to keep the fruit flies out of it and let it sit overnight and tomorrow put in the yeast. The lid is on loosely, paper towel covering the airlock hole keep the fruit flies out. And I took a little sample from my faucet here, fill up the hydrometer test jar see what my starting gravity is it's around it's about 14 percent or so potential alcohol and the number over here on the scale for specific gravity it's about 1.110 need to write that down and uh, then take another reading when it's done fermenting and calculate my alcohol. Just judging by the alcohol scale, it's uh, going to be around 14% depending how dry it finishes. It has been 24 hours since the sulfites and everything was added. It's day two. Time to uh, lift off the lid here and put some yeast in. Now that is some nice color. I have a pack of EC1118. It's been rehydrating. I'm going to stir that. Get it mixed up well. And uh, pour it into the... I guess you'd call it must at this point. Pour it into my waiting 
acne and grapes. tight and put the airlock on it and wait for bubbles. I've snapped the lid on tightly, put on the airlock partly filled with water. That was a fairly large amount of yeast for a small batch like this so I should be seeing bubbles before too long. It's day three Fermentation is well underway. Nice steady stream of bubbles. Since I have some fruit floating around in there, I'm going to pull the lid off and push that down in and stir it. I probably do this maybe once a day. If I had a large batch of fruit, I usually punch it down twice a day. So let me get the lid off this and we'll see what's going on. There it is. There's a lot going on in there. The uh, enzymes are still working on the grapes. Makes for some strange looking things. And the yeast are happily eating up the sugars. Just want to stir that around a little bit. Helps get the yeast up and moving too. That's such a small batch of fruit. I may not even need to do this every day. It looks like most of it's pretty well submerged. But it doesn't hurt. It gets the yeast up and moving. Well, I'm going to put the lid back on in the airlock and uh, just let it go. It has been nine days now since I started this batch. No bubbles now for at least two days. I think it's probably been about three days. I give mead a little extra time because sometimes it wants to stop and restart. I've been stirring it, agitating it. It's time to pull off the airlock and uh, set it aside for a moment. I'm going to get a little sample out of my faucet down here and put into the hydrometer jar here and see what the gravity is. It's finished quite dry. The hydrometer's sunk. Very little of it sticking up yet. It's uh, It looks like it's about 0 0.99 so I get it spun around here where I can read it about 0 0.99 I'm going to say 8 because I can see the 6 line above the liquid you sight along the bottom so I'm going to go 0 0.998 that's my final gravity the color looks great and um, there's something I should mention if your meads finished too dry then try a different yeast this particular yeast is uh, it has a high alcohol tolerance, so it'll eat up about everything you can throw at it. So this might turn out a little dry for some people, but I think it's going to be really good. Um, so I'm going to actually drink this sample and uh, taste it, see what it tastes like. And then I'm going to hook up uh, some tubing to my bucket down here and uh, run it into a one gallon jar. I calculated the alcohol content by taking the starting gravity of 1.110, subtracting the finish gravity of 0 0.998. I take the difference, 0 0.112. You multiply that times a constant number of 131, and then that gives you your approximate alcohol by volume. 14.672% is what it came out. I would round that off to 14.7%. 131 is a constant number. 
uh, the more precise value is 131.25 some of my older videos I used 129 don't do that that's an old number from my beer days it was close enough but uh, for wine you need a little more accuracy so 0 0.112 times 131 gives alcohol by volume and now I'm going to rack this stuff into a nice clean sanitized gallon jug here I am set up to fill the jug I have some tubing hooked on to the bottom of the bucket in the future I'll have to siphon when I move from jug to jug but this time I don't need to I just need to let it flow out the color of this stuff is great here's my hydrometer sample I've already tasted it it tastes about like 14.7 percent alcohol but it's really smooth it's not I mean, it doesn't really bite or anything most sources say to age mead for a year or two I find I like it young just as well as old almost it does get better with age I drank a 10 year old bottle here recently and it was just amazing it was just straight honey mead so I want to slowly let this flow I don't really want to splash a lot or, or pull a lot of debris out of the bottom and watch it closely because I have overfilled way too many containers Hopefully I'll have the right amount of volume. So I'm just going to watch this fill and see where I end up. Here's a one gallon jug. Nicely filled with mead. Great mead. And I stuck a, uh, a uh, stopper. And an airlock here. In that. I'm going to let this sit for one month then I'm going to siphon it into another jug and see how clear it is there's a lot of stuff still needs to settle out it looks clearer than it did in the bucket speaking of which there's some yeasty stuff and not much left in there the volume was very close just about perfect actually I had to stop it had some yeasty stuff starting to come out I didn't want that so that worked out really well you want to keep your jug pretty full if it's not you can add a little wine or vodka or I use just water some people say not to use plain water but like if you end up down here just pour in a little water bring it up here to about the neck you just don't want a lot of oxygen in there so I'm gonna set this aside in a dark place at or slightly below room temperature uh, sunlight can adversely affect some some red wines some so I just don't want to take a chance I don't know if it'd fade in the sun or not I really don't but I'm gonna keep it in the dark and uh, siphon this out uh, one month from it's been well over a month now since I racked the grape mead into this jug you can see a little tiny bit of a, of a white line here that's wax from the honey it's beeswax it's hard to tell how clear it is I'll shine a flashlight through it here in a minute see what we can see right now it's time to rack it again like I said it's been over a month and it's time to rack off the sediment into this nice clean gallon jug I've got tubing and a stainless steel racking cane I don't recommend plastic ones I've broken many of them actually a jug this size you could probably do it with just tubing if you're careful and you hold your tubing down at the right level going into the jug and out of the jug at the same time it's a little tricky you could do it with just tubing 
what I'm going to do is sanitize this. I have some uh, metabisulfite powder. I use this for uh, sanitizing mostly. You can use it for wine making, but it's very concentrated. It just takes a little bit. It's only like a quarter of a teaspoon to to do six gallons of wine. So just a little bit goes a long way. And I'm just going to take that, fill it with some water, and use that to sanitize my jug and my racking cane and tubing. And possibly my airlock. I'm going to reuse my airlock and stopper off this one right here. So I'll take uh, take that stuff off and sanitize it too. Meanwhile, I'll get me a uh, flashlight here and look through. This. There's where we are as far as clarity. It looks uh, pretty good, really. Maybe a little haze left. It's hard to tell. These grapes have so much color. They're so dark. I'll be able to tell more when I'm running it through the tubing. That's how I sanitize my tubing, my racking cane. I'll uh, use some of this to just pour it out, pour it through my tubing, and uh, I'll fill this up and rinse, rinse this off too. I do that all over the sink. I'm just uh, showing you. I fill it up with water, warm water, a little bit of sulfites in it, and that's how I sanitize my stuff. I have everything clean and sanitized. Now if you don't have powdered sulfite, just crush one Campton tablet and mix with water and do the same thing. And my airlock stopper is clean and sanitized, super close up. So what I do is fill up my uh, cane and tubing with water. I hold on to the end of the tubing and hold the end of the cane up in the air and I shove the racking cane down into this jug and put the tubing into the other one and with any luck I'll have a siphon well, that's how I start siphons there's other ways to do it a lot of ways to start a siphon but this is just my method so I need to get started with that I have my racking cane Tubing full of water, keep my thumb over it. So I'll carefully, oops, very carefully, put this down low and jam my can on the top. And with any luck, get a siphon going. And it won't take long with these gallon jugs. I have to be careful not to overfill the bottom one since I have a little extra water in here it's going through the tubing looks very nice very clear looking and it's hard to tell with darker batches and this is not going to take long at all I'm going to carefully tilt it Try to get all the liquid, leave the solids, and also not overfill my other jug. I probably won't because I have to stop before I get to the very bottom. Well, there we go. Well, that was pretty good. No disasters. I have the stopper and some water and airlock. I'll let this sit for another month or so, rack it again, see how much sediment I'm dropping, and go from there. It has a very interesting color, sort of a pink, almost orange, dark pink. I don't know how you describe that exactly. Well, I'll check back in a month and try it again. It is time to rack the grape mead again. I've sanitized my airlock 
and stopper that was on the jug and also a gallon jug and racking can and tubing I'm going to siphon the grape mead out and uh, see how much sediment is in the bottom there's quite a bit I can see with a flashlight so I'm not going to bottle it this time I'm just going to rack it let it sit a month and then bottle it this jug has actually sat longer than a month my plan was to go one month but it's actually been more like three months due to a uh, long series of events here at the top you can see there's a small ring of white material it's evaporated a small amount that's beeswax from the honey it'll leave little white streaks here and there well I got everything sanitized using uh, let's see a 1 8 of a teaspoon of potassium metabisulfite powder and about a gallon of water so I've got all my material I'm going to use here sanitized I'm going to get this uh, siphoned and rack it into this other jug I have my siphon started it's running down the tubing and into the other jug when it gets close to the bottom I'm going to tilt the jug and try to get as much liquid out as I can it's moving quickly here is what's left in the bottom of the bottle there's still sediment, still dropping some stuff. I've got it stirred up right now, but there's a pretty good layer of sediment there, and I just didn't think it was quite ready to bottle. So that's why I just racked it. And I had to stop because I was about to overfill my jug here. In fact, I did overfill it slightly. Small mess, nothing too large. And there's a little bit left of my tubing here that I'm going to pour out and taste. It smells really good, so I want to taste it, see what it tastes like. Well, I'm going to let this sit for one month, and then I plan to bottle it. This is what my sample looks like in a glass. It looks quite clear. I possibly could have bottled it, but it looks like it's still dropping some sediment. I'd rather wait a month and make sure I have crystal clear mead when it's bottled. Oh, that's good. The honey comes through, and I can taste the grapes too. Sometimes when you make mead with fruits and things, the one or the other will overpower the other one. You know, the fruit might overpower the mead. Like if I make a really strong uh, blueberry mead, it might just taste like blueberry wine instead of mead. So you kind of, if you want to taste the honey, you got to kind of balance things. Well, that's all i got for now. It's time to bottle the grape mead been uh, more than a month more like two months been rather busy haven't been able to get to it so it happens sometimes but anyway this stuff is ready to go in a bottle it's more than ready I'm gonna take a crushed Campton tablet and put this down in my bottling bucket two gallon bucket with a valve on it on the bottom and I'm going to siphon my nice pretty jug of grape mead down into the bucket and then I'm going to run it out of the bucket and into bottles I have five fifths wine bottles got a bottle filler got corks floating in some sulfites and water and a corker to insert the corks in the bottle. I'm going to go ahead and siphon this jug down into the bucket. I'm carefully siphoning 
down into the bucket trying to splash as little as possible the wine swirling around down there should get my crushed Campton tablet dissolved and I'm getting close to the bottom already this won't take long here's what the jug looks like there's a fine little line of stuff fine layer it's very clear looking though with any luck I won't have much sediment in the bottles if I do it should be minimal this stuff's been in need of bottling for a while it's been sitting around a long time well now I gotta get my bottle I have the bucket of grape mead up here on the counter tubing attached bottles in position and here's my bottle filler that I'm going to use just gotta turn on the valve and uh, fill them up here it goes Open that up all the way and get down here and watch the bottle filler. And that's how it's done. Here are the bottles, filled and corked. I wrote on the ends of the cork GM for a great mead. Put the year on it too. I normally print removable labels, but it's only five bottles. It's not worth that much trouble. I did have enough left over for a really nice sample. I'm quite pleased with it. It has residual sweetness. A good color from the grapes a very nice honey flavor it has high alcohol but it's not really noticeable at first I'm going to take these bottles here lay them down for I don't know six months a year a while to age they've been in the jugs for a while aging already it probably doesn't need a lot of aging it tastes pretty good right now well, that's all I got for now. Um, thanks for watching, and good luck with your mead making.